Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, can I apologise in advance if you hear any strange noises, squeaks, grunts? Uh, my wife, for some reason, has decided she's going to start playing the cornet. Uh, so if you, if, if in a in a, a strange quiet period where I'm sniffing the wine, you suddenly hear something, uh, it's not me. I, well, I assure you it won't be. Uh, anyway, I've got five New Zealand Pinot Noirs in front of me. I did a, a New Zealand Pinot video recently, I'm not sure how long ago, and, or when, when it's going to end up on the site, but um, they were from other parts of New Zealand. These five are all from the same one. Uh, they're all from Marlborough. Um, is Marlborough an also ran in the New Zealand Pinot Stakes uh, behind uh, Central Otago and Martinborough? Um, well, let's have a see. Five of them. Uh, we've got vintages. We've got uh, two, no, what, 2011, 2002, 2010s, 2009, and a 2007 to finish. First one, though, 2011, Yalen's Estate R3 Single Block Series Pinot from the Awatry Valley in Marlborough. I stick my nose in here and it's got that youthful crunchiness that um, last time I smelt, smelt something like, like that. It was um, like something like a Beaujolais 2009, uh, Cru Beaujolais. It's got that bouncy, uh, tigger-like raspberry and loganberry fruit, a bit of earthiness behind it. Um, some cherries there too. Uh, it doesn't smell like it's going to be classy, but it smells like it's going to be darn satisfying. Let's see whether it is. Quite a bit of weight behind there. It's got a slightly metallic, uh, earthy character too. It's the cherries that come through and it's those, those ever so slightly cooked Morello cherries that uh, I'm getting coming through strongly. Nice wine. Um, it's intense. Uh, maybe it's just a little bit on the simple side, but certainly uh, no one would complain if you gave them a glass of that. Uh, is it almost too much of a good thing? There is this roundness and richness. Uh, I'll be uh, interested to see how it develops, because I'd like to see it just calm down a little bit. But, hey, it's only a year old, and um, it tastes pretty good now. Uh, so I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, and I'll come back to it later. And if it's drastically better or drastically worse, I'll let you know. Okay, next one is Wither Hills. Uh, Wither Hills Pinot Noir 2010. And um, interesting having this next to the one before. Uh, the guy who set up Wither Hills uh, left in 2007, a guy called Brent Maris. Uh, so it's no longer his wine, but the next one is his wine. So let's see how we get on with this. Now it's not as bright and bouncy in its fruit as the one before. It is a year older, uh, so that, that's partly to do with it. But I'm not sure whether it quite had the, had the concentration of the first one uh, anyway. Um, here I just get a little bit of uh, savoury tomato character alongside those, um, uh, those rounded, uh, quite plush berry flavours. Just a little bit of touch of volatility. Smells like it's going to be okay, but um, not great. Let's have a see. Just a little bit simple. Rounded, honest fruit, juicy, um, certainly, again, as with the first one, nothing that people could complain about, apart from a lack of complexity. Um, it feels uh, that it's al it already feels slightly tired. I've been looking out for uh, 2011 of this. Uh, um, I I'm starting to taste the... Um, the structure rather than the wine in the first place and uh, uh, people say oh acidity softens with time it doesn't if you ever have old wines the thing that you notice about them is scrawny acidity as the fruit has, has disappeared i'm just getting a little bit of that where I, i'm tasting a little too, too much structure um oaks okay it's giving this sort of slightly soft smooth vanilla edge but um yeah i would like a bit i would have liked a bit more flavor in the grapes in the first place let's see how we get on with so this is um, marisco um, and Brent Maris, he's called, and the, 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 there's, there's a long story about William de Marisco, who's one of his um, um, ancestors, blah, 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 King Henry III, 1242, you're going to have to buy a bottle or sneak a look at the bottle in Waitrose to, uh, I think it's from Waitrose, to, uh, uh, to see the full story. So, 2010. Two things I noticed about this. Uh, first of all, it smells like it's going to have a younger, fresher, more concentrated fruit flavours. Uh, again, it's those quite similar fruit flavours uh, as in the first one, the loganberry, uh, the raspberry and those morello cherries. The other thing, though, is this what I call the smoky bacon oak character. It feels like it's had more time in new oak, uh, which is giving it a bit, of a bit of a framework. feels like a more ambitious wine than the ones we've had so far. Uh, and I think it's probably got a more ambitious price. But uh, uh, I'd like to see that oak soften a bit. But as you see, I've just only just uh, uh, opened uh, opened it. So uh, uh, give it time to calm down. And let's see a bit, if a bit more swirling brings out more of its true personality beyond the oak. Yeah, definitely one that's not telling all its stories today, um, despite the stories on the back of the bottle. Um, so you are getting these warm, rounded, plush flavours, and, and they're really nice and uh, welcoming. There's no uh, overripeness, there's no hard edges, 
Uh, there's tannin there uh, and the oak's giving it a bit of a framework. I don't notice the taste of the oak as much as I notice the smell of the oak. Um, and uh, the, the, the fruit is on that quite plush side, um, and, but there is freshness about it. So uh, for me, almost a wine that I need to open today and drink tomorrow. So I'll report back on that one because I think that there is, um, it, good as it is now and certainly the best so far, I think that there's going to be an even better wine in uh, uh, three or four hours time. Okay, let's move on a vintage. 2009 Dog Point uh, Pinot Noir. And uh, Dog Point is the, uh, I've, I've done some of the wines in these videos before, but if you haven't seen them, Dog Point was set up by, uh, I want to say Jack Healy, but he's someone I used to be at school with. Um, what's he called? James Healy. Uh, James Healy and Ivan Sutherland, who uh, respectively were the winemaker and viticulturalist uh, in the heyday of Cloudy Bay with Kevin Judd as general manager, and uh, they planted their own vineyard quite a while ago, so were selling fruit to, uh, to people, including Cloudy Bay, and also including Goldwater Estate uh, in Waiheke Island. A bit of a diversion. Anyway, they, they, for the last maybe four or five years, uh, they've been producing under their own label, Dog Point. Now this is more the more enigmatic side of Pinot Noir. Um, if the ones before have been all about a uh, slightly bouncy, tigger-like fruit, this is the one where you stick it, your nose in and you go, enigma. Um, as in, uh, you will come back to it and each time there'll be something different. Uh, so that the, there is some of that warm generosity of the, um, of, of the, the Marlboro Pinot flavours, but there's also an earthiness, there's a real sense of place here. Um, and uh, there's, uh, the oak is pretty subtle here. Uh, it feels like it's been there. They, they, sometimes people give their wines too little time in oak. Here it feels like they've not been afraid to maybe put their wine in oak for uh, older oak for slightly longer, uh, which has uh, rounded out some of the uh, puppy fat that uh, has been on some of the previous three left with, some, with something more interesting, more compelling. Uh, but um, anyway, I'll, t I'll taste it and shut up. And there's this warm, rounded, relaxed feeling about it. Um, and uh, it's funny, I, um, I got this smell of the smoky bacon oak on the, uh, on the uh, Marisco one. Here, I get, I, I get a little bit of that, that when I come to taste it. This, yeah, this just edge of, uh, of smoked, not, yeah, just ever so slightly smoked meat. There's a grilled meat character coming through too. Uh, the cherries, the raspberries, the loganberries, maybe a bit of the strawberries. Um, but what I like about it, it all, uh, it, it's the highest alcohol so far, but it also feels like it's the freshest and um, it's got the most, um, it, it's got the most body and structure. It's not afraid to have a little bit of tan in there. Uh, so you're left with something with a, a, a yes, it's quite plush feeling from the fruit, but also you can, the frameworks there to stop it going all wobbly. I like it and as with the Morisco I got a feeling that uh, I'll like it even more in about four or five hours. Final wine, La Strada. Um, it's funny, it, it, it's, it looks like it should be from the La Strada winery, but it's actually from the From winery and it's their La Strada Pinot Noir and this is 2007, so oldest by a couple of years. Let's give this a whirl. When I think of the From si style, I think of uh, something that's quite sturdy and uh, uh, and juicy, and uh, they, they, they've, 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 they've done their best to quite get uh, get a lot of flavour out of it. I'm not normally a big fan of, uh, of extraction for extraction's sake, because uh, in extracting flavour, you can also extract bad flavours as well as good flavours. But uh, let's see how they've got on here. Certainly if I look at the colour, um, it doesn't, sometimes you look at, uh, uh, at Pinot Noir and if someone's tried too hard, it's, it's almost turning black wine rather than red wine. This is definitely a red wine. And it's just starting to show a little bit of maturity in its colour, so a slight brown tinge. And it's, it's entering a really nice phase because uh, the fresh fruit characters that uh, it's had in its, its youth just starting to fade slightly, uh, being replaced by this more truffly undergrowth type of character. Um, and so it's not lacking freshness by any means, but um, it's got this soft, warm, welcoming maturity. It makes you want to dive in. But layers of flavours rather than just sort of some, rather than spikes of flavours, it's got lots and lots of different things going on. So there's a bit of that undergrowth character, uh, there's a slightly truffly, feral character, uh, there's the, uh, there's a, uh, some of the, the those fruit flavours, there's a bit of the freshness, there's a bit of the cooked fruit. And um, yeah, there's something of that, that a slightly metallic hint, and I think that's soil rather than uh, uh, any any wine problem. I think it, it, it's some of the, uh, uh, the, the, the yeah. I'm not sure what, what type of soil that they've got here. Doesn't really say on the back. Yeah, hints of earth and mushroom. It says on the back. A uh, great selling notes for people who don't like wine, isn't it? Earth and mushroom. Great.
That's just what I want in a glass of wine. But I know what they mean. It has got that earthy, feral, yeah, forest floor feel. Oh, it's a fascinating one, that, because uh, uh, there's parts of it that are fresh uh, and parts of it that are already very forward and friendly. Uh, that, that's like ever so slightly jammy, uh, reddish fruit character. Uh, the, you know, the plums, the, uh, the, 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 the red berries. Uh, but then there's also this, um, this structure that makes me think that... Um, I'm not quite sure. I really can't work out whether I'm seeing it at its best today. Um, and uh, as I said, I'm keeping, going to keep an eye on, on, on all of these. Uh, I've got a feeling that uh, the dog point will get significantly better. I think the Morisco will too. I'm not sure whether I'm not seeing this at its best now. Uh, but I do like it. Uh, I, I like its round, soft generosity. Uh, this is almost Pinot Noir for Rioja fans. Uh, it's got a slight vanilla sheen to it, uh, but this earthy undergrowth, uh, it really has got this sense of the soil about it, as had the dog point. Um, so, is Marlborough better than uh, Martin Brewer and uh, Otago? Well, I don't know, but uh, some of these wines were pretty good, and uh, I, let's, not, let's not try and fight over who's better, let's just enjoy them all. And I'm going to go and now and listen to the girl from Ipanema. It's playing some more of her cornet and maybe have a glass of uh, one of these while I listen. Probably give her one to try and get her to shut up. See you soon.